Well, this is about as good as it can get. It's uh, really, really bright. That's like San Diego day today. Oh, it's cold, 52, but we're on our way to the pool. I'm um, expecting a package today. It would be the second time they've missed it if they do. I'm not about to stay home all day and wait for car parts. Uh, so I signed the little release form and taped it on the door. I'm gonna meet Razvan, maybe Sabrina too. I don't know if she's going at Life Center. We're gonna swim for a little bit. Um, and then I think Jeff and Luke might be coming down tonight to do a thermostat in Jeff's M5. They might do it at Jeff's, I don't know yet. Um, but that would be interesting. We could redo the DIY, because it has for some reason vanished from E39 source, and I don't think I have the, for the source file. Kenan, if you're watching, if you did that video um, in post, and you have the source file that maybe you uploaded when you did it with Luke, I think I was in California like two years ago, if you have that, I would love it if you could get that in my hands. Otherwise, we'll redo it. Anybody know what the hell that is behind me? It's a Jag with two inch high headlights, huge front grille. It looks like it's got an R or an S badge or something in there. Kind of hard to look in the camera while driving, but um, yeah, I don't know what that is. I've never seen that before. It looks like an SUV. Oh, flashing battery light out of focus. It's a F-type SUV. Very weird. Kind of, kind of ugly, but cool looking because it's different. That exhaust integration is really bad, though. Nah, never been a fan of Jag, really. It's another day. Another day of floating in the pool. How was that? Good. I got my car clean. Jetta's all clean now. When was the last time it was done? Uh, about like a week or so ago. But the problem is, is where I work, it just gets. It's pretty good. Is that? Uh, That's residual plastic. Plasti, yeah. So I have to get that off. But not bad. We'll see how. I'd like to buff it. Hello. <laughs> That's sweet. That's a 6BD60 full leather interior with the Titan trim. That is a nice car. That's a facelift. It's got some exhaust on it. It's from our county. He knows what he's got. I don't know what exhaust that is. It's a muffler delete. It's the muffler deleted E60 M5 with full leather and a manual. Holy hell. It's got the nice seats too. It's got the cooled seats. Fortunately, that bumper took a good scuff there. That's beautiful. The clock strikes one, it's time to wrap up a vlog. Today was a pretty crazy day. Um, this morning feels like days ago. Anyways, uh, this afternoon, Jeff and Luke came down. We did a bunch of work on Jeff's M5. Uh, a couple hours, we did the thermostat, flushed some coolant, did that um, gasket down in the water pump housing or the thermostat housing where the thermostat seats in. That was a pain in the ass. Um, he actually left his coolant and distilled water here. So Jeff or Luke, if you see that, I will save that for you for next time. And then we have dashboard parts. Look at that. Um, we also have a bunch of very mangled metal that used to live inside of an E39 M5. Um, this was a pain in the ass to cut out. I started using the Dremel and I got really pissed off because I couldn't cut through this metal. Looking at it, it's a decently thick gauge. It's not something you could bend with your hand. You would need channel locks or pliers to bend it. Um, and I got my cutting disc out, so I thought, and put it on the Dremel and put a towel over the door and the electrical components and the rubbers near the area where I was cutting, and I could not get it to cut. So I went to who, um, I was gonna say Home Depot, I went to Lowe's, and I bought some uh, 18 gauge metal snips, some aviation snips and mangled it up with that. These things cut through it pretty well and ended up getting it out. And then when I was putting the Dremel away, I noticed that the cutting wheel that I took off said plastic. I was trying to cut that metal with a plastic cutting wheel. No wonder it didn't freaking work. I didn't use the metal one, which was right next to the plastic one. They look identical. One says metal, one says plastic. So my bad, that was stupid. But um, we've done a bit of a retrofit. Per uh, Nate's video, Jeff did it on his M5, and that's right, Haha ha, AMG now has a European dashboard. Very nice. I've given up on doing the full leather swap. Those parts don't exist. 
Um, if they do, they're thousands of dollars for parts that are not in good condition. So for a great deal from a guy that lived in Bulgaria, everything from the trim down has now been replaced with the European parts. Well, if you don't understand why and don't know the difference, if we sit in here and fail, close the door, we now have a gap that, uh, or we now have a, a definition line in the interior componentry here that matches up. We save several inches of legroom. The glove box is smaller. It continues over here. We have a new lower steering column trim. I have not cleaned this stuff yet. I just put it in here. We got fingerprints all over it. I need to go through and do a cleanup. Um, but the other side as well, everything is now European, which gives us all this additional room. So the European uh, dash is different. This is how the car was designed. It was supposed to look like this with these big swooping curves here and then matching into the door panels. Um, the United States, the DE93 US market got different components that were a lot thicker because we're stupid over here apparently and we sometimes do not wear seat belts. Uh, which would mean in the event of an accident, our knees would go into the dash and having the dashboard down here instead of up here uh, would keep us from, I don't know, I'm too tall for this, I'm 6'3", so it would not happen to me, but anybody less than about 5'10 would probably get pushed down there. Um, so that's why the U.S. got different stuff. So I've switched it. I had to cut metal out over there. All of this here was really easy. You pop this trim off and then there's a bunch of screws under there that you remove. Um, in the glove box area, there's more screws up at the top. All of this went really quite swimmingly. And then you get over there and behind or in front of the EWS module is a big thick metal welded in um, plate that uh, you have to cut out. Reason being the Euro Dash has this really convenient, let me get my iPhone light, has a really convenient storage pocket over here which is a fantastic place to keep a wallet, uh, your phone, a camera, keys, whatever kind of stuff you have with you. Now I have purchased a new pocket uh, that I'm gonna throw in there. There's just two screws and two clips on the bottom that hold that in. So you see that, that that's really the worst wearing part of the kit that I bought is the stuff in there. So I'm just gonna replace that plastic pocket. So we'll get rid of that crap in the back there. Um, but that pocket then uh, extrudes into the dashboard and would hit that metal reinforcement um, bracket. So I just cut that out with those snips that I showed you, so that was fun. But we now can see the pedals better. When you're sitting in the car, you can actually see the trunk release button now. Um, it's just much better. And as I said, everything's really dirty. I have not cleaned the fingerprints and all that off of it from the couple hours it took me to install today. So in my opinion, big improvement. I love the way it looks. You get more room. You can move the seat up, giving the rear passengers more leg room as well. Um, as I said, you get to see the nice pedals. You do see more of the footwell over here, which looks a little weird. I'm not used to it yet, um, but it's really nice. And a great storage pocket, because I always use these two in the door, uh, so now I can have stuff in the dash as well, since we don't have armrests that open here, and I don't like that mod that then turns this into a big flat plateau here. I think that looks dumb. So, good improvement. Jeff and I have that now. I think Kenan's probably gonna do it in the future, maybe after the PDC retrofit. Uh, but it took several hours to do, and really, aside from having to cut that metal out, it's it's an easy process. Um, the worst part is definitely cutting the metal out, and then the driver's footwell sealing, as I call that thing, has to be replaced. The OBD2 port now lives up in that cubby instead of uh, in, in the dashboard area. But uh, nice modification, good improvement, and probably still legal. I don't know if that became something that was that would affect the legality of not having the US spec dash. But whatever, I always wear a seatbelt. So I think these things are kind of funny. Maybe I'll throw one down in the parts box. Otherwise, I will just throw them out because they're totally worthless. Just cut up metal. There's where I was trying to cut it with the plastic disc. It was not working at all. So that was today. We got a thermostat in Jeff's car, the dash in my car. Um, went to Dave's Cosmic Subs with Rosvon. Hit the pool for a little bit today. Um, and then we all hung out here, Luke, Jeff, Ken, Rosvon, and Sabrina for a couple hours and hung out afterwards. It's now 1 a.m., everybody's left, I'm tired, and I'm going to bed. So I will talk to you tomorrow on Sunday. Good night.